this is lesson nine, um, and we're going to begin modeling the openings, except we left out a little segment of wall behind uh, the tub on the second floor. So you can see there's the interior wall system, the exterior wall system on the second floor. I, I've outlined uh, that shape, and what I want to do is add it to um, to this group. There's a couple ways of doing that. Um, let's start by um, pushing, pulling that element to the height of the adjacent wall there. Now, pasting in place is very useful. I'm going to show you a, a way that we can use it. I'm going to triple click this and control X, which effectively cuts to the clipboard. Um, let's do something else that will make this uh, stand out a little more clearly what I'm doing. If I go to view component uh, component edit edit hide rest of model whenever I click a component or group it'll isolate it like so so I'm just going to paste in place that element um, that I uh, control X out of uh, my drawing before so now this is pasted in place where it belongs as part of this system And I'm not going to worry about the um, the extra lines there. I suppose we could, if you will, uh, stickler um, clear the intersections so that it just it's part of that group. Anyway, that, that, that enough enough about that. So that completes. Let's close the group. Uh, let's go to our 3D see-through view. We saved the scene that shows that shows where we are uh, with the model here. Um, in order to create openings, we need to be able to um, inspect um, the elevations. We, we paused at elevations here because there, there are a couple ways to go about modeling openings. Uh, you need a drawing that indicates where those openings are and what size they are. So one thing we could do in the in the same fashion that we included our cross sections and long sections into the model, we could incorporate the exterior elevations and paste them on the surface of the model and use them as a template. If we wanted to do that, I've turned um, off the visibility of the roof element because the roof has an overhang that's going to in interfere with that if I want to place the drawing directly on those walls. And the I also turned off visibility of the exterior uh, ramps. So let us import the elevation that has uh, in this case, the back of our model, or the, the garage door, and the two windows on the second floor. So there's the element. We'll need to make a layer for it. I'm going into component attributes, and I'm going to add the uh, XYZ rotation to that component because it brings it in as a component. Let's create a layer for it. AutoCAD um, 
back. AutoCAD elevation back. Or front. It's all relative, right? Let's put. Oh, we need to collapse the layers that we imported. So let, let's do that first. Take these. So all of these are, are layers that were in the AutoCAD f uh, file. You have to be cognizant of this whenever you're working with models and importing things. Even when you're importing uh, models from a 3D warehouse, especially when you're keeping careful track of layers. I want to delete those layers and move the content to the default layer. So everything lives on layer 0. I'm going to take that component and put it on AutoCAD elevation back. Uh, let's select the drawing, and we're going to rotate it on the x-axis, the red axis, 90 degrees, because we want to want to flip it up. Let's type in a value 90. Um, and let's close this for now. So that if we look in the back. An isometric view. Okay, the drawings at the or it's got the it's cornering the origin. So we want to move it to this back face. Simply take the move tool and drag it. For now, we want to place it approximately. Let's just move it in front of where it belongs. So if we look at a back elevation, it's not quite where it needs to be. So you always, whenever you're working with orthographics, uh, adjust your orthographic um, segments. Select this and move it first along the z-axis. So let's align. Know that this is a line that represents a site plane. I'm going to lock the blue axis in place and snap to Let's make sure that we're snapping to all right, back. Yeah. Blue axis. Okay. So now we have it. It's it's correctly aligned elevationally. Go to back again. Let's align it with the red axis. I accidentally made a copy of it. Let's try again. The red axis. Snap. Finally. This is going to be a little trickier. We want to paste it right to the back. So um, there's a couple ways to do this. I could take any point that I know is on, for instance, the point of the uh, floor, first floor uh, level, which is four inches above a grade. So th this is. This would be a useful point from which to move this. And let's drag on the green axis and then shift to uh, lock that axis in place. And we want to snap to the outside face of the building. So now this entire elevation is exactly where it belongs on, on, on the drawing. Let's pause. Okay. With, uh, okay, so uh, I'm not going to do every single one of these, but we'll, we'll see how it's done. We're going to use this drawing as a template. 
So if we want openings in the exterior walls on the first floor, we want to activate or, or enter into that group. Right? We can still see the outline of the CAD drawing, but now that we've, we've opened uh, this group, we know that we're drawing on that group. So when I outline, you can still snap anything you can see in SketchUp, you can snap to. I created the outline of that window opening, and I can push this. to the face to create the opening. Let's close this group. Let's turn off the visibility of the CAD drawing. We can see, and let's turn off the visibility of the, uh, the x-ray and the face model. We can see we have a neat little opening into uh, the back wall. So I'm going to uh, go forward and continue to do these openings, again proceeding hierarchically on the exterior, um, and then we'll um, uh, proceed to create the interior, uh, any modifications, openings that we need to make in the interior walls as well. I'm going to save this as Lesson 9, um, Exterior Elevations and Openings.